everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Phil Stanier. I'm a uh, lecturer in performing arts here at the University of Winchester. I am also um, artistic director of a performance company, kind of uh, by the name Strange Names Collective, which I've been doing for 18 years now. And um, that practice ranges from solo performance practice to contemporary theatre, durational work, but also into uh, outdoor site specific works and all kinds of things. Uh, but I'm also a dramaturg as well, and the reason we're here today is because <laughs> I was a dramaturg for uh, Sonia Her and her new piece, uh, Nutcrusher. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. My name is Sung Im Ho. Um, and you're I'm from? A, what? And where you're from? I'm from? I'm from Korea, South Korea. Um, I'm a dance artist. I came to Belgium to study choreography in 2004. Since then, I was in Belgium working with uh, different Belgian dance companies like such as Jan Fabre, Le Valais de la Bay, Lead Company, Avatar Bernet, and there are, there are all kinds of dance theatre works. So it's not really like only physical work, but it's also I have to sing, I have to, to act, um, all sorts of things. And then I start to make my own work since 2012, and I, I believe this is my um, eighth of work that I'm, I'm making yeah. in Europe and in Korea. And we met um, because there was a scheme running in at the University of Bedfordshire in Luton uh, called Testbeds, which was a scheme run by the Arts Council and the University to embed artists in a region to boost the artistic output of the area, basically. And I was on a sabbatical and so could do the scheme as the Strange Names Collective version of myself. So I was being an artist for a year. And you'd been put on it. And we'd both been put on the scheme as mid-career artists who could advise younger artists, but also boost our own practice at the same time. So we were helping our practice as well as boosting those. And that's where we met in Luton. Um, and so we did that project 2017. in 2017 and we were doing our own things, mm -hmm. our own projects out of that. I was doing a piece on forests mm -hmm. and you were doing human war. Human war. So about migrancy. Mm -hmm. uh, migrancy and borderlines between people. Mm -hmm. And then we finished and then you contacted me and said, would I like to help you make? Mm -hmm. Not crusher. Not crusher. I suppose that the um, I suppose the uh, the obvious question is why on earth would you want to do such a thing? <laughs> why did you I, want uh, to? <laughs> I did a, a small work in progress. Oh, you remember the solo yeah. solo work? Also, I was making it was about immigration, uh, migration in in foreign body in foreign country. How I feel alienated in this space. Like I really, I, I was talking to Phil about like keeps on. I feel like my identity is wiped yeah. out in, in 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 UK somehow. I feel like I have to be a different person than who I am, and I'm struggling a lot about this identity issue. So I was making a solo work, and I presented it in one of the conferences in Luton, mm -hmm. and then Phil was the only person who gave me <laughs> critical view. Everybody was saying, "Oh, it was fantastic! It's great!" and blah, 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 blah. And Phil was like, hmm, the whole, whole element of what you presented doesn't come together and then you cannot tell the story. And then this was the first time that I got critical view and I was like, yeah, he has a very constructive mind, which I don't have because I'm really good at improvising. So if there's a theme and I can improvise for hours and hours and making a lot of interesting images and materials, but how do you construct it together? That's my weakest point. And that's like probably Phil can help me to construct the, the how from A to F or A to B or you know, the journey by journey. So that's how I yeah. form you. <laughs> yeah. And I think 
for me, that I mean, what's good about this is that that works well with the way I work. I think if you looked at my work, you would go, "Oh yes, it's very well constructed," mm -hmm. and then its weakness would be, "Where's where's the freedom? Where's the improvisation? Mm -hmm. Where's the where's the flesh?" Mm -hmm. And so, relatively speaking, it's a it's yeah. a good match to pair, you know, the the, the, the relative kind of structural thinking. But I, I kind of knew your weakness as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's it's it starts to be forming very well and then like, hmm, now we have from A to F and now I, it's time. So we build together. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, now this is a time to we all deconstruct what we have. And I have to go down from yeah. uh, another level, which was that I was really aiming for it was to make an abstract dance without any narrative or dance, a storyline. So how can we get? How can I get there? Was my yeah. my next step? I think the thing we should probably say is what is Nutcrusher about? Where does Nutcrusher start? Mm. What? Where? Did, why did you make? What is the piece really about for you? Where did you start? That was I got a lot of influence from Hashtag Me Too. Um, when it was a completely big social issue in, in Europe and all Western culture. In Korea, it was so quiet. In Asia, there was nothing coming out. And I'm like, this is not possible because I know there are a lot of things going on. Hello, guys, you have to wake up. Or like, that means it's not because nothing happened, it's because the repression was so strong, they could not really speak up, speak out. Yeah. And I felt like, okay, I need to make something about this. How the whole society wants to see the, the female to be presented. How the female has to be always, you know, yeah. beautiful, young, or especially, like, I felt like how the stereotype of Asian female body to be, need to be presented in this society. And I wanted to, to kind of give a stop button. Like, let's just stop looking at us in this stereotype. Let's just look at our body as a body itself. That was the meaning of the creation. And so I think there's probably something I haven't mentioned to you at this stage that before you, before what happened was that I, I came into the process and suddenly had some work set up, and our first session together in this was me coming in, watching it, and going, all oh, right. <laughs> What you want to do is to make this into a narrative structure. You need to put that there, that there, that there. That turns this into a narrative structure. This is how you do it. But before I'd done that, seen the piece, I'd gone off and researched um, the Nutcracker Suite. Mm -hmm. There was the reference in the title. Uh, and I didn't know, and wasn't so much interested in if you were deliberately or accidentally or not even referencing that. I went to that piece and went, oh yeah, this is a good piece in terms of, in my head, thinking about what it is to be, to make a ballet piece mm -hmm. and then to reject to some kind of formal structure and whatnot. And the Nutcracker Suite is really interesting because it's an unfinished two-act dance piece. It doesn't have a narrative resolution. It, it, finishes at the second act and they then make a third act and people have tried to make a third act and fail basically because it doesn't it doesn't set itself up properly. So I came in on on the basis that I was going to probably doing that kind of thinking and applying that to what you were doing. And then we set it up and it was working. But the other thing that occurred to me at the beginning that I thought was really interesting that I was wondering about is, I'm going to be the only guy in the room, mm. and what does it what does it mean to uh, honestly acknowledge that to say if you've got if you're making a piece about the Me Too movement about the male gaze or uh, patriarchy and repression, what 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 can a, uh, a male dramaturg bring to it? You know, what's what's the kind of, what's the compromise or the complicity of myself? in the room by doing that. Um, and so what I remember, after we got past narrative, after we got past, well, let's not, we're not trying to do that, we're trying to take that away. A lot of my early advice, my early responses 
were about what men, what men do, what men would see, what men would look for. So I was approaching it from the male gaze or from other men, and I'd basically be going, this is what a, a, a sexist sportsman would think. This is what a businessman from the city, or at least I was imagining, this is what Patrick Bateman from American Psycho would think. This is the guy who stands you up at a date. This is what he would think. This is what he sees. And then you, and it seems to happen quite a lot, you kept going, you asshole Phil, what a horrible thing to suggest. And, and that was quite interesting for a while, because we kept putting men in the space, making the space male, that it functioned according to certain rules, that you had to behave according to them, and that we were working against that or in relation all of the time. So I don't know, the, the question, the, my first question is, now that we've gone kind of through that, there's a stage that follows that, what, how was that stage of the process? What did you make of what I was saying and doing, or what, what came out of that for you? The, there was okay, so the, I would, so there was this scene. There was a scene that I I put the mask on. Oh yeah, the bad father. The, yeah, so I have no identity, and I start to manipulate two ladies, and it felt so good. <laughs> and people still remembers that part because I became oh yeah, I became a Snoop Dogg or whatever, and I top is the top the yeah. world. And I can manipulate these ladies, and that part was so strong. So after we had I had an after talk, and yeah. in Korea people still remembering that part. Yeah. Like, where is that part gone? Because it was so. But what in throughout the whole performance, what I really wanted to do is not making female against male. Because what I wanted to say. Is, is that the woman is a victim of the whole society and male is putting us in a really like, repressive yeah. and it's not about that, it's about like, how we look at the female as from female view yeah. and as a male view let's revisit it yeah. is this what we want or is it the society tell us to do or is it really what we think the shiny ass is what we all have yeah. and we just show it as it is but that, that was it and then I had this I kept this part till very long because I really liked it. And one of the friend of mine came to see the working progress and she was saying, how I deliver, how we deliver is fantastic. But this is the society where we really actually see in real life. So why do you want to represent the scene we have already? Yeah. We have seen this on TV every day. And then that, that kind of made me think about, oh, this is a part I really like, but maybe I have to yeah. revisit it to, it's not that I'm making, I am making male yeah. power against female yeah. power, where now kind of like a, a feminism is arriving in Korea, now arriving and settling in, and it's kind of like really getting dangerous. Yeah. It became like all or like after the war, they don't want to eat together now. Nowadays, men and women want to, doesn't want to eat together because you never know what happens, you know. So it, it makes the society divided, and I don't want that. I want to just see. Yeah. Let's look at the female body again. So that's why it happened. And I was yes. I was supposed to engage one of the male dancers as well, and then I thought like that's really yeah. dangerous. Yeah. yeah. I think it's worth saying that for people who haven't seen the piece or a draft of it, fundamentally it's three dancers who never or almost never face the audience and spend the majority of the dance piece um, shaking their ass at the audience in brightly coloured sequin trousers. Uh, and so there's, there's no escaping what the piece is about and the, and the, the visual challenge is presented to the audience. But we did have other sections, some really lovely sections that were about kind of the remnants of male bodies, these black, the black, figures, black figures yeah. in the spaces. Yeah. And they, they, they were great and they hung around in the piece for ages. ages yeah. And again, we, we had the same moment and you had that conversation.
conversation with someone about not representing the same world. And at some point, I came in, either at the same time or very similar time, and said, you know what, you need to make the piece that's got nothing to do with men, mm. that it needs to be about female pleasure and enjoyment yeah. in the, it, the best moments is where it actually feels like you have complete agency. So it's a really odd step to make where in a kind of to hit theory, in a modernist framework you would be able to transcend mm-hmm. and you would be able to escape into kind of some pure feminine world or realm or discursive space. And uh, but you know a postmodern approach which we would be more appropriately kind of deploy you never you'd say oh we're never able to escape the, the construct we're in. But we just said well just no men in just make it not about men at all. Mm-hmm. That's already happened. Yes, yeah. And then the minute you and we started looking at it in that way, it just kind of relaxed. And it's that it's not that that male patriarchal society context had gone. It'd just be moved to the side of the piece. It'd be like yes, or underneath it. It's like well, this is what the piece is built on or built next to. Mm-hmm. But while now that we're here, we have the opportunity to just do this. And so moves, headbanging moves, which had seemed to be, there's a large sequence of headbanging, very long sequence of headbanging. <laughs> 20 minutes. 20 minutes, 20 minutes of headbanging. Which, which is really interesting because my wife and my daughter, and my son Isaac actually, they've all watched the video and they love that section. But my wife watches it kind of stricken with horror mm. that you're going to everybody break yourself everybody yeah whereas Imogen who is only you know nine uh, doesn't really um, see it in the same way she reads it purely as fun because she's got the young body she doesn't matter you have terrible things you do to our bodies uh, and she just goes you know this is exciting this Aww. is visceral the same price, and you think, and that's actually what's at the core of it. That there's a level of, um, I don't want to say youthful, but a level of energy, a bit like a spirit mm. of uh, uh, pleasurable embodiment that's held in the piece, in in and amongst, mm. at the same time as the as the damage, as the construct, as the repression. That actually, at the same time. You are unified in this action. You are in charge of this action, and that's what it starts to become about for me. I was like, I don't have to think about being a man watching this. I don't have to. I can let that go and just Mm -hmm. go. Yeah, this is this is what your body is doing. So there's a to 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 really to the structure. So it starts with shy as. (laughs) <laughs> bouncing part for about 20 minutes of the show so you don't see our face so long hair everybody has to have a long hair because it's also part of the costume part of the our body part of our statement so we all have black long hair we have a apron sort of thing it's bare, bare body so it's like your back is naked and you have very very shiny as in front of your face, shaking for like 20 minutes. And it gets intense, intense, intense. And there's no sound, but counting. So we, we hear the rustle of the trousers. We count, yeah, yeah. And, the, and the way from. And, and we count throughout all 20 minutes, and it gets intense. So we're exhausted. So we, in the end, we're all shouting, five, six, seven, eight, two, and we try to be the same, but we never really say, but we try to match the count and go march together, push together. And the certain where we arrive at a certain level, there's a bombastic music comes in. And it just gets worse. <laughs> we just uh, even that from, from the S banging, it goes into whole body shaking and it goes into the head banging of another 20 minutes. So after <laughs> after 40 minutes of no stop shaking, yeah. uh, and then by the end of the, the head banging, our apron is gone. We are completely you don't know is it's a female body, is it animal? It, it doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't, so it, 
So what, what I wanted to, to, to drive and drive is you start with really extreme stereotype of female body, goes into end of the performance, it became just genderless, but completely broken. Lots of hair, sweat, exhaustion, breathing, and just completely broken body, which we really wanted to to achieve. Um, the head baby was really rough. I would not recommend you to do that for twenty minutes because I had a really dizzy illness for after Crimea, uh, where I almost had to to cancel the performance, but we we went through. And it was okay, but it was not, yeah, it was not <laughs> only the joy, it was also suffering. Um, yeah. Uh, so, but the interesting part of the, the whole this journey was after the performance, all this scattered body on the, on the, on the stage, still not showing your face, the heavy, lots of hair, completely broken. Still only showing your asses, shiny asses, and start leaning together, three bodies, very slowly. And there is a very, very bittersweet music of Billy Holiday. I will, I will be singing. Yeah. Comes really soft, like almost touching your skin. And then we start supporting. So it all body got comes, and very slowly we start moving and supporting each other. And probably this is the small hope that we have all as a as a message. Um, and in this journey, the, the, for me, the most interesting part was the ending part, where that we are completely this scattered body and we start to to to, to lean each other. And slowly, the audience light comes light home, uh, and there's no sign. And people have to decide then how long they want to stay, or they they just walk away, or you know they start to really like very active, actively involved in the, making decision. So they're not just passively watching something and clap their hands and they go away. They they keep with them. So they're like they start to really hmm, looking at each other and talking about like. And they just really like that, that was a very interesting yeah. process for me to make them really make a decision. Yeah. I think we spoke at the I'm gonna kind of go through a few little things I've now remembered. One of the first pieces of advice or suggestions that I made on watching the early early, early draft I says I said, okay, um, you're not allowed to stop moving. Yeah. And that was my first instruction the piece must not stop. It must, that is the demand of the piece, it must be relentless. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the attempts to structure it afterwards were trying to reconcile how you structure a piece that does not allow cessation, mm -hmm. okay, you don't know how you move that. And, but also, so that became an imperative that you're constantly trying to wrestle with. Also, the, that process of the, the shiny asses, the naked back, the long hair, the obscured faces. You, it starts with eroticism, with a, you know, a very clearly eroticized body, and then you know, moves that towards embodiment and, and breaks it. But the, one of the last things, some of the last things I said to you is that what the structure becomes one of obliteration. Whereas it used to be one section would lead into the next one, or one section would transform into the next one. What it kind of felt like towards the end, which was really nice, a good way of characterizing it. So you'd have the first section, and then the second section would arrive to destroy the previous section. And then another one would come and destroy that, and another one. So it was things were wiping out what had come before. And again, when you get to the end, because you've managed to obliterate the eroticized body, the dancing body, the foot, there's all of these other things that have been wiped off the slate. There was only, the only thing left was contact and breathing. Yeah. I think the last thing I said in response to the piece was 
you know, insert, in search of an empty, one of the only things you need to do is breathe at this yeah. point. And that, that, is, that is enough. But again, at the beginning, we were talking about hard starts and soft starts and hard endings and soft endings to shows. We never came back to this, but it's worth reminding that when you, what you normally do with a show is you come in, the lights are off, the lights come up, and the show starts. Start, yeah. And then at the end of the show, the lights go down, and the show ends, and you plan. And I and you, and we've all made pieces where the audience arrive and something is already Start. tinkering it's about. The stage has already existed, yeah. And the edge of the show is already a little bit uncertain, and it softly leads its way in. And then you make your way through the show, and then you can have hard and soft exits, mm -hmm. like Brexit, from a show. You can literally, you can heal, you can, you can destabilize the audience by going, this is not a thing that ends, that is separate from the world. This is absolutely part of what you're walking out mm -hmm. into. This, this extends beyond here. And... I think for a long time you and I have been trying to search for mm -hmm. a hard ending where we could go and stop, which I would normally which I would normally say is the right way to do things. Uh, because in music, I hate it when songs fade out and they don't have an end. I like songs that because I think it's just lazy because you can end the show. Whereas actually, the show doesn't. It has an ending, but that ending. Is a, is, a, is a soft one that can be extended for as long as you possibly want it. And once you get to those last moments of breathing and supporting each other, that's the end. You can now go at any point, but then it's allowed to rest really? in the space and for the audience. For, yeah, for the audience as well, because they, once you enter the space, we are already there. We are already all black, completely without any identity, with three of us figures standing, looking at the audience where they don't see our face. And the show starts like that, and then it just goes on 40, 45 minutes without any, there's no stop. Goes on. Yeah. And then that was, that's the first part, time where the audience can actually really breathe as well, the performance yeah. as well. And then also you realize that they really need the time to digest all the things they have been through. Uh, so it was really necessary for both. Yeah. And it is, like, I didn't want to, to be end, and then they go home and they forget about what they have seen. I want them to take with them the yeah. pain, pain, <laughs> <laughs> the sadness, yeah. the sourness, yeah. but the but the little bit of sweetness. Yeah. That everything I want them to to keep it. So yeah, and you have to provide that in the piece. Yeah, there has to be room in the piece. There has to be a. Uh, the time yeah. that the audience can uh, can go into to find that, I think. Um, yeah. How did they find it here? Sorry, oh, no. sorry but just go back yeah. to the male view, because uh, we, <laughs> I, I don't know if, if I made a mistake about the, the, the non crusher title. Because it was, <laughs> it was on the, on the, so it was all advertised in, the, in the, the, the performance that you need, to, you cannot miss in this week or this month in Korea, yeah. and then so it was in, on the on the first page of the advertisements, and I saw a lot of bad replies. Oh man, not crush Are you kidding me? Are you what? What are you going to crush? Are you going to crush the nut? Why do you show your asses? And it was so bad. <laughs> Many for men, of course. And it was like 177 bad replies. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god! This, of course, these people would not see the show. And this is not the show about. But maybe but this it is was. True. Uh, yes, this is the show. Sit down and watch on repeat. Yeah, I mean, there were a lot of also like the female part yeah. supporting. But really, like, I don't want to make the male against the female. And then I got bad replies to, to, from the title. Yeah. And then there was one of the guy, he's a male choreographer, and he, after the show, he kind of gave a funny, funny comment on, by, for himself. He was saying like, wow, it's so different. They were, they were 
So after performance, they went to eat something, and they were talking about it, the female and the male, the old, everybody. And it was like, so weird. I, the moment when these figures started doing the head banging, and then they start to take out apron, the first thing that he thought about was like, oh, what kind of dress they would have? And then he realized, what am I thinking? Yeah. Exactly what am I thinking? Yes. Yeah. And that's Where the, 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 the most of the, the female, yeah. they were not thinking about that at all. I don't want my ear. No, I'm just going to say that my, you know, yeah, my wife, when she watches it, her thought is, is how much it's hurting and how much it might hurt. And, you know, it's all about a, a completely empathetic, sympathetic response yeah. to your visceral yeah, yeah. experience. And I am sympathising with you to a degree because I, I know what it used to be like to headbang. Mm. Oh, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have photos. Uh, okay. but, um, <laughs> and so I know what that feels like, but at the same time, there is in every performance when the first time I watched and it was Marta got dressed at the back behind yeah. the screen in the performance, where it's like, oh, right, and again, this is the male in, man in the room. I had to go, right, I've been. Invited and I'm here for work, but now I am looking at someone naked who has not expressly given me permission to see them naked, and I've got to go. Now that's okay because they wouldn't do it if. But I have, you know, my brain just just the quick loop of is everything okay? Have we, you know, <laughs> am I doing anything weird here? No, I'm not. It's okay, and you, you check yourself. Yeah, you check that what's going on, and I think that one of the interesting things about the piece is that, is that I think for a lot of people, men or women, they don't check. Mm. They don't check what they're thinking or what mm. process they're going through when they're looking at things. And the piece prompts you to go, what are you looking at? What are you thinking when you look at that? What are you looking at? What are you thinking when you look at that? And gives you time to, to go, oh yeah, they're doing that. Oh, hold on, they're doing it for much longer. Now I've really time. Really got. I've got time to look at that, and that means I've got time to think about what I'm thinking when I'm looking at. And that allows that space for for checking and thinking and kind of acknowledging what's what's really going on. Um, where I think a lot of cultural product we have at the moment is fast, and the images are presented to us at such speed that. You see the surface, but you don't see the content, and you don't think about. You're not given the opportunity. You're not really encouraged to think about the you know the nature of the image that's actually being constructed in front of you. Where you do, you you produced a lot of material and then you thinned it out mm. to go. It must only be this for twenty yeah. minutes. Yeah. This must only be this for twenty it's minutes. The part. And to allow them to kind of dig into that and to go, this will. You know, deliver and will deliver more the longer it goes on. Um, I remember, like, we had a lot of props yeah. in the beginning of the performance, yeah. uh, the, the research. But we did a lot of stuff, we created a lot of good images, mm. very strong images, and then in the end, we wiped out everything. And then let's do all this with only this three body. How can we do this? Yeah. And that was the, the part of the, the start of the deconstruction. Um, for me, to make an abstract word is so important. Because if you start to, to follow the narrative way of making images, it is very easy to connect with the audience and give, tell them the story. Yeah. But then you give them less space to imagine. Yeah. And, and think by themselves. Yeah. So that's what we were really focusing on. It was really difficult. That, that's for me the most difficult part, but I really wanted to do it. And then I said, okay, the s bars headbanging, this is enough material that we break through the whole yeah. throughout the performance. Because then again, my, my response is from the piece. Again, it's, it's telling that I moved from Early responses that were 
structural mm-hmm. and talking about how this might fit in relation to the context, you know, mm-hmm. how does this relate to me too, how does this relate to we were talking about Harvey Weinstein yeah. and Woody Allen and various people. Then we moved on to more generically kind of world building, what are the rules of the space, what are the rules of the world, what power structures are involved and so forth. And then the last phase of my responses were, it makes me feel this, it reminds me of that, it makes me attached to this, it, you know, and it becomes about affect and it became very much about me telling you how I felt about the piece and and again why it was really useful weirdly um, I think I don't know how many dramaturgs would do this but showing the piece to my you know 10 year old daughter and 7 year old son and to my wife who has no engagement with um, contemporary performance you know in, in that way to go to to get what they see yeah you know, really blunt um, I won't say naive but because it's not that, but it's naive in the best way. It's it's people who have no knowledge, no expectation of what they're going to see to get a real kind of just look at this. And what do you think? And so, so sometimes it can be really telling to, to kind of go, oh, they really they do really attach to this. They have the image is strong enough to hold, it's strong enough to hold a seven year old's attention. And it's interesting to see what happens when you. Go from a seven year old to a ten year old to my wife, who's my age, and then to show it to my students at different years in the degree and from different degrees, and to go, Oh, you guys have some, some of the students engaged really well and watched it and took it in and responded to it, and others didn't know, yeah. didn't know what, to, and that's fine. But, uh, but it's also telling, you know, I, you know, you watch the students and you watch some of the male students in particular and watch their response to it because what it led to in with the first years was briefly into a discussion about feminism and me too and patriarchy and one of the one of the comments from one of the male students afterwards which was well intentioned and was well framed was you know what do men do what do we, you know, so, you know, young guy of 18, 19, you know, what do we do with ourselves in this, in this moment? We're not quite, we're, we're not, we don't know how to read mm. what masculinity and what correct behaviour is because I suppose you haven't relaxed into it, you haven't found yourself, you, you don't know what the rules are. That's kind of the story I tell is but when I got that lecture in my second year, in my 96 or something, when someone did feminism with us, I spent a few weeks going around going, men are in crisis. Men are in crisis. And then I went, wait, hold on a second. I'm not in crisis. I'm fine. Other men are in crisis. Oh, right. It's okay. Yeah, it's, it's like, and, that, and it's that, it's that yeah. same thing. But then at the end of that discussion, as the lecture finished, one of the students came up to me and said, oh, yeah, but it's not just men. It's women, too. Women have to be held accountable for this. And it was a female student who came and had that conversation with me and while that's technically true it's like the one percent of women that are responsible for what men do they are yeah, they're buying into a, a bigger patriarchal society and yes, it's not, their, not their issue is you know but this is this is that whole thing of inculcation and how you watch something from a gender position and how you buy in, you bought into a structure and why what one come back to the like very secu- the circuitous route is to the title mm. is nut crusher mm. and it actually um, in as much as the piece does its work the title mm. also does its work mm. just to land a piece quite quite openly and brutally with nut crusher and then there's obviously a reference to crushing a man's testicles let's just put it out there and and not and kind of just not and just saying this is absolutely what's needed we need work that can that can that can say that that can speak to that desire that that affect that 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 you know kind of power imbalance and that it should you know that it really should make 
people with a particular view of the world feel a little bit, uh, yeah, yeah. Affront, um, confronted. Yeah, yeah. And that's you know, uh, yeah. and that, that's what the piece does, yeah. and that's what the the title does. Mm. So much less than being a piece of art, and not quite as sweet, but it's yeah. Have it. <laughs> well, obviously, the beginning of the, the process you mentioned was like, how about horse face covered with nuts? Do you remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, walnuts. Yes. Walnuts. Yes. Walnuts everywhere. I was, not thinking, I was thinking about it. And then I, I in the end, I blow a small black bottle. Yes. And then I filled it the whole space with them. We tried. Yeah, we tried. Were. That was the sound was really yeah. disturbing. I mean, in a good way. Yeah. But and, and then it just very it randomly just <laughs> pops oh, in. Yeah. Yeah. It was funny, but it was nice. It was nice to try also. So we tried a lot. That's yeah. the interesting thing is, is that you can see within the project. The ways the other projects it could have been that you could have made a a six hour installation, which is the space filled with those black balloons because they were just you know, slightly soft squishy objects. It's just like yes, obviously, but they, they stood in for that. But they also stood in for like innards. They were very kind of it was internal organs and it was that kind of business. So we we had the I had the black black. Suit, morph, morph suit, morph suit. Like morph suits. and I stuffed it into the all black, it's this size of, of balloons, and it kind of, it all kind of, it became a very weird body, is it become male and female, and then if I put it in the chair, it was never, it could always, but it's always lumpy, like it's yeah, just, very yeah, lumpy. It's, it's, it's got mass, but not quite, and then there's the one part that, that Martha, one of the dancers, start to, to turn for five minutes with this black figure, and giving a smile, a sweet smile, it became super romantic duet where you see this two person yeah. and she starts opening the zipper and then taking out all the guts out, the whole body of the and people are like oh, freaking out, oh my god, she's really cleansing, cleansing yeah. the whole guts out, the bad stuff, because black has the, the complete stories about something bad or is it, you're cleaning. Uh, and then she started wearing it and it became a very weird alienated body. Yeah. There was a very strong image we had that I throw away. Sure but maybe it will come back. <laughs> but, it really, but again, it was right to do so because that was about men. Yeah. And it was like, this is And it was also a very narrative way. Yeah. Cleansing of, of yeah. the kind of ritual thing. That we want to add. Yeah, it led, it led too much to a story, it's and it's like you need to yeah, yeah. dispose of this. And, mm -hmm. yeah, that's always painful because, yeah, for ages I wanted uh, that in very much so because it just felt so good. Yeah. It's just too cathartic for men in the audience. You know, it's just too easy. Yeah, too much about them. It's not about you. It's not about men. You know, it's just, you know, <laughs> Was it? Uh, and I gave you, and I don't know if you ever got around to reading it, but I gave you The Argonauts by Maggie Nelson. Uh, but they were talking about that book on Radio 4 yesterday, and they were talking about how in Argonauts by Maggie Nelson that there's a section, and if you say there's a section, everyone remembers what the section is, and it's where she says, Something along the lines of, I'm paraphrasing very badly, um, your identity, you know, whether you're male or female, or somewhere in between, or somewhere on the way, is nothing to do with anyone else. It's a personal thing. And if you have an issue, or you're not sure about someone else's identity, the most obvious and simple thing to do is just check in with them and ask them and talk to them about it because then you'll also realise that their identity is not about you. It's about them. And in the same way, the piece for, for our beginning about maleness and patriarchy and you know, me too movement, it's not about 
not about men. It's not a piece about men. It's a piece about you and Martha and James. It's about women. It's about and the sooner we got, as it were, my maleness, we got that view of things, those men out of the piece, yeah. then it was able to be the yeah. piece that they wanted to be, that they wanted to be. And that's the, and I suppose that's the thing. Um, we were talking beforehand about what drama tells you is and what, you know, and then, you know, my, and again, that process that I was always trying to edge around was trying to not tell you my ideas. Mm-hmm. But trying to ask you questions or point you in several directions so that I wouldn't say it's giving too much too much of what I might think. Mm-hmm. So again that you we could allow, or at least from my perspective, I could allow you and ensure that you were making the piece you really wanted to, that you were that you were really finding and not looking at what you were doing and trying to steer in a particular way and thought you know, that would never happen but again. But it was especially also this part, this time, because I was in. Yeah. And it's really, for me, it's, it's really necessary to have somebody outside yeah. to see, ah, this is, this is like this, this is like this, did you do this? Because, because you only, inside, you have, you got feelings, but you have no... Yeah. You can't see the wood from the trees, you never can, yeah, for every piece. So I think it's like, oh, this is what it's like on the inside of the trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I'm doing it.